On May 30th, U.S. spaceflight made another leap forward when two NASA astronauts launched on SpaceX's new Crew Dragon capsule. It was the first crewed launch to orbit from U.S. soil in nearly a decade. There were speeches. A new age of American ambition has now begun. Congratulations from senators and representatives. The crew of the ISS even rang a bell to signify the opening of the NASDAQ. These celebrations are par for the course. By now, it's a familiar routine for NASA. This was uh, an amazing moment of unity for the nation where we could all look at the future and say that things are gonna be brighter tomorrow than they are today. But outside the space community, things looked very different. Breaking now at 11, one nation united in anger. Just five days before the launch, the death of George Floyd at the hands of police sparked widespread protests throughout the United States. The NASDAQ bell ringing played out over streets where protesters had marched just the night before. With this launch, NASA and SpaceX were trying to reclaim the glory days of human spaceflight. But they also got a stark reminder that one rocket launch can't unify all of America, or even the space community itself. May 30th was a pretty spectacular day for the aerospace world, but for some in the community, it was more complicated. It was definitely exciting to see the launch. I was like, all right, it'll take about eight minutes for them to get to where I'm really like, oh my gosh, they'll be good, they'll make it. It was like a weird transition afterwards to like discuss the protests and stuff because we just couldn't ignore that happening. Kayla Watson is part of a new generation of young professionals in aerospace. She's just getting started on her career and grappling with the contradictions she's finding there. Like, I can't believe we made all these accomplishments in the space industry and we don't know how to treat human beings with respect and kindness. Um, really telling. It was the same for Michaela Dunn, another young engineer embarking on her journey in the space industry. I actually ended up watching the launch on my phone on the way to a protest. I don't know, it's weird feeling united in a way, but then feeling like on the ground, not feeling as united as we are in space. The launch and the tumult together may feel unprecedented, but for former NASA Administrator Charles Bolden, it's not a new cocktail. The demonstrations had not started when my wife and I, my family and I, started discussing whether or not I would accept the invitation to go to the launch or not. It, it was all about COVID-19. Then uh, the demonstration started you know, after, the, after the killing of George Floyd, and it took on a totally different uh, question then, because now we're back to Apollo 11. In 1968, the U.S. erupted in protests over the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. Dr. Martin Luther King, the apostle of nonviolence in the civil rights movement, has been shot to death in Memphis, Tennessee. That same year, NASA launched one of its most important missions yet, Apollo 8. It was a Pathfinder mission that sent three men around the moon for the first time. Many like to say that Apollo 8 saved 1968, that it was a national reprieve from the year's turmoil. But that is a rosy read of history. In reality, there was real pushback to the Apollo program. It was expensive and disconnected and staffed with white male astronauts. Civil rights leader Ralph Abernathy led a protest of Apollo 11. The following year, poet Gilbert Scott Heron released his poem, Whitey on the Moon. Ten years from now, I'll be paying still while Whitey's on the moon. Even though people think Apollo had this overwhelming support from the country, it did not. The Vietnam War was raging and the civil rights era was in its height. So there was a lot of stuff going on in the country, not unlike today, that I think caused uh, the space program not to enjoy the great popularity that we now dream it did, you know, believe it did. A lot has changed since the 1960s. For one, NASA's workforce has become much more diverse, especially within the astronaut corps. Guyon Bluford became the first black American in space in 1983, and many notable astronauts followed, including Mae Jemison, the first black woman to fly on the shuttle. But there's still much to do. The space world remains mostly white and male, especially when it comes to those at the top. That's true for NASA and for newer players like SpaceX. The space world still exists within something of a bubble. 
That makes it hard for a launch to bring people together when the world is in pain. You can't unify a country under like the passion of others. Just because this is my passion and I love space does not mean this person next to me is going to feel unified in that way. I feel like they're really trying to make like a call for unity with the space launch, but it's just not hitting home exactly where it needs to. It's like, yeah, United people in the aerospace industry specifically, maybe for um, a couple minutes. But after that, we all went our separate ways. I mean, there wasn't like a joint, it's not like we went and watched the protest together after that and, you know, shared our feelings about that. It was very one-sided. For Kayla, that response hit personally. I almost feel betrayed. There's a point in time in my undergraduate career, um, I won't get too deep into it, where I was failed by the system. The space community was kind of what I cling to at that time because I love aerospace and those people were so welcoming and like, Space is the hope of the future. These are good people here. This is my only space to feel safe. I feel like I have nowhere else to really go. But this time, there may be rumblings of change, pressure from within NASA and the industry to stand up. Even NASA astronauts, normally silent on any issue seen as political, are speaking out and pledging to fight racism. America, let's get our crap together. This is, this is unsatisfactory. We got to stop this. We do live in a bubble. The, the space community lives in a bubble. And uh, it's very comfortable that way, or, or it has been. Uh, the good thing is people are making it uncomfortable to be in the bubble. When members of the community, when young astronauts begin to just express themselves, uh, they're rocking the boat. People are not letting us off this time. And when people take the risk and speak up, it gets noticed. Leland Melvin, uh, Mae Jemison, and Charlie Baldwin. Mae Jemison I actually did a book report on in kindergarten. Cause I was just like, she's so dope. And it's crazy to think now that I'm in her field and just like have opportunities to meet her. So I can't give up, I can't quit. They broke in so many barriers, like I need to continue. The stakes are high and it will take a lot to square the utopian ideals of the space program with the modern terrors that so many black Americans are living through. I could literally have dreams about going to space, like being a space tourist and staying at a space hotel. And I wake up just so happy and just so full of joy. Like, I can't wait for that to be me. And then I can also have a nightmare, like I had recently this week, that um, there are two shooters and they're just going around killing all the black people. And they're all black people I know. And I always wonder, like, when's the next time it's going to be someone I know? For Michaela and many others, what's really needed is a reset of who actually makes up the space industry. I would say that it's definitely discouraging when, you know, I walk into an aerospace class at UT and I'm one of two Black people out of a class of 200. Um, I might be one of 30 females out of a class of 200. And that right there already creates kind of a us versus them mentality. And I think that we need to nip that in the bud because we are the future of the space industry. After being silenced for so long, I feel as though we need that space to speak up. For everyone in aerospace right now, that means having the hard conversations and doing the extra work. Anything less just might not fly anymore. I think that's the worst ignorance you can have is willingful ignorance when you know there's a problem and you choose to, to, to just turn a blind eye to that. And right now, I think that a good chunk of the space community is being willingly ignorant. And frankly, you won't get too far with that.